Hello, everyone, and a huge thank you for joining us today for a discussion on setting the right strategic goals for your organization. This is a lead dev webinar created in partnership with Airbreak. This webinar will last about 45 minutes, uh, after which both myself and the panelists will head over to Lead Dev Slack to answer some of your questions in the Effective Teams channel. I'll repeat that at the end so that everybody can move over to the channel. We may also have time to answer a couple questions live, so please do submit those through the QA feature in Zoom at the bottom, and we'll get to them if we can towards the end. So let's get started with some introductions. My name is Tanisha Barnett, and today I'll be joined by Stevie, Mustafa, Mondar, and Eric to share their experiences and insights. I'll ask each of them to introduce themselves. So let's get started. Stevie, you want to start? Yeah, thanks, Tanisha. Um, my name is Stevie Palmatier. I go by she, they, and I am a senior director of engineering at LeafLink which is a B2B platform for the cannabis industry. Um, there I oversee our technical roadmaps and engineering teams associated with our product offerings for payments and capital management. And prior to LeafLink, I've been on Wall Street uh, and have built teams and found solutions for similar problems uh, through FinTech innovation and, and consulting. Um, so um, I'm excited to be here with you all today. Great, great. Mustafa, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks, Tanisha. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Mustafa. I go by he, him. Uh, I'm a VP of engineering at Coursera. Before Coursera, I spent my time at a few startups, including Evernote and Twitter. Uh, and I, I lead product and platform teams at Coursera. I also play a key role in driving the engineering vision for Coursera um, and helped, have helped uh, join the company seven and a half years ago. So I've helped the company scale from a small company to where it is today. Uh, I helped set the North Star and engineering vision of Coursera, so I'm really excited to be part of this panel and, and discuss uh, how to set goals with all of you. Great, great. Mandar? Sure. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thanks a lot, Tanisha. Hi, everyone. I'm Mandar. Uh, I'm VP of Engineering at Masterclass. Uh, Masterclass, we are a growth stage company. Uh, we are in the education tech space. Uh, essentially, we have uh, we have courses from various like masters across the world, master practitioners like starting from Gordon Ramsay's of the world and Steph Curry's of the world, all the way to Hillary Clinton's and George W. Bush. Uh, my role, I oversee everything engineering at Masterclass, setting from technical direction all the way to like how to tie it to business goals and things like that. Uh, similar to Mustafa, I have been with Masterclass uh, for past six years and grew the team from. Uh, when I joined, we were about three people to about like 120, 30 people in the engineering team. So have really looking forward to, to the conversation here. Great. And Eric? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm Eric Anderson. I'm currently CTO of Airbrake and VP of Engineering at Logic Monitor. I'll get into that in a second. Uh, before that, uh, I actually uh, did IT, ran a data center here in Austin for many years. Um, and then... Uh, from there, I joined a startup that didn't do super well, so I learned what not to do at a startup. Uh, and so following that, I started uh, two companies where I was CTO. Uh, both were uh, acquired, uh, one was acquired by Oracle. Uh, and then I was at Oracle for a few years as a VP of engineering, uh, building out their Kubernetes cloud service. Uh, and then from there, I joined Airbreak as CTO, uh, which was acquired by Logic Monitor. That's how we got here. Uh, and, uh, you know, in my spare time, I hang out with my family and I learn how to fly helicopters because, I mean, why not? Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for introducing yourselves. So we know strategic goals help teams and their organizations stay focused where they're going and why. Today, so we'll discuss a little bit of how we set those, how we communicate those goals for our teams and, we'll, and how they drive growth. We'll discuss what success and opportunities look like. So let's get started with our first question. So this is for everyone on the panel. What do goals look like for each of you and your organization? So Mustafa, let's start with you. Yeah, a uh, great question. So at a high level, the way we set goals at Coursera is we have a three-year engineering vision, and that shows you the North Star of where we want to get to. And then we break it down into one year strategic roadmaps, uh, which is more concrete steps to get to the North Star. Um, and we refresh our three year vision every year. It doesn't mean that 
I, ideally it doesn't change and pivot uh, uh, a lot every every year, but we still like to take a look at it and see if like anything has changed with the business or you know anything has changed with the environment we are in. Like COVID had an implication on our on our three-year vision, right? So that can have a big impact, but we do look at it every three years. So what it looks like for us is we break it down into three areas. The first one is quality, uh, where we measure site-wide availability. And at, at this point, we are more focused on functional quality and, and how to make a delightful user experience and what are the areas involved there. So things like a component design system and other areas fit into that first bucket. The second one is around engineering productivity. So how do you improve uh, your build process, your CI CD pipeline? Uh, and other things that are needed to, you know, in a, in a day to day individual contributors um, uh, life uh, um, workflow. And then the last one is uh, around organizational goals, which includes investing in things like a career framework or uh, our, our diversity, equity, and inclusion goals are here as well. Uh, we have our hiring goals, um, and uh, we also have things like uh, learning goals, like, for example, because we are in Coursera. Uh, we also have goals around learning and growing our skills uh, as an organization. Uh, more recently, we've also started measuring productivity using DORA metrics, which is the DevOps research and assessment metrics, uh, and including things like uh, deployment frequency. So yeah, that's uh, that's what the goals uh, at uh, Coursera roughly look like. Great. Awesome. Mondar, do you want to tell us a little bit about what goals look like at your organization and how you go about that? Absolutely, absolutely. And again, it's a great question. Very, very similar to Mustafa. A uh, couple of things I will add is, so uh, one thing is the three-year vision is really critical, right? And as Mustafa said, like, it's not set in stone. Uh, you you revisit it like periodically, but setting that directional guidance is, is important to make sure we are all like uh, uh, rowing our boats in the, in the right direction for the long term, right? The way we go about goal setting, uh, and this is where I think engineering, just technology strategy, one of the key things that I, I hold really important is it cannot just sit in isolation by itself. It has to sit alongside other functional strategies uh, around, around like product, around marketing, about monetization aspects, about like just whole slew of things, right? So the way we go about goal setting um, at company level is we have buckets around strategic critical areas for the business. So I'll give you a few examples, right? Let's say acquisition, customer acquisition is one area. Uh, we will have at company level, we will have directional guidance saying, hey, this is what our uh, acquisition cost should be, but acquisition is one, let's say uh, segment of four. Engagement is another seg uh, segment of four. Uh, there is aspect around how are we going to monetize the business further, like things like that. And engineering is key partner in making sure that all these strategic uh, goals are achieved at business level. So the way we go about it is we use the OKR framework. Uh, we have OKRs, annualized OKRs, uh, which are set at company level, and they translate into these um, initiative-based OKRs. And these OKRs are owned by uh, co-owned by like product engineering design together. So the way we go about it is um, we set the directional OKR up front, more top down, but then from bottoms up, the teams get, get together and they figure out like how, do our, how are they going to achieve a particular OKR? And they come to the table with a set of proposals saying, hey, these, this is the roadmap that we want to propose. This is how it will achieve the OKR that we have. And as I mentioned, this goes across different verticals within business. This also spans to further aspects about people development, similar to what Mustafa mentioned, but that is tentatively the, the framework that we go with where there is top-down directional guidance and bottoms up more like roadmap finalization. Wow, that sounds great. Eric, you wanna tell us a little bit about goals and you and your organization? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to I'm going to step back for just a second, and and assemble my perspective a little bit okay. um, because I think everything that's been said so far is like super spot on, um, but I want to make a couple notes. Um, one is every organization is very different, uh, every company is different, teams are different, so one one path may not apply exactly to another, and you have to be super dynamic every single time you're going through this, and also organizations change all the time. You hire new people, people leave, the, whatever, right? So keep that in mind. 
as Mustafa and Mandar were talking, uh, an idea formulated in my head, and it's kind of closely relates to how I think about goal setting generally in any organization. That's, I think of like the mission and the vision uh, of the organization. I think of that like a picture, uh, like a, a color picture, right? And in the different pillars of the organization, like marketing or business or finance or engineering product, I think of those as like the different colors that make up the picture, right? If you don't have one of those colors, the picture doesn't look right. They all have to be in sync. They all have to be in tune to put that picture together. And you, you got to have a clear picture that everybody can see. So everybody knows where you're going and what you're putting together. And then I think of the individual sort of strategic goals as like puzzle pieces that put that picture together. And so, yeah, you can hit one of those goals. You might get all three of those, you know, RGB colors dialed in, but that doesn't really put the picture together, right? Like this is just a puzzle, you know, there's a piece, right? So you have to figure out how do you put all the pieces together? How do you work together? And you got to get all those colors together to make that picture. So I think if you step back and just kind of visualize this as we talk today, I think it's a good framework to think about how to set those goals. So within any organization I've, I've been in or run or managed people or whatever, um, I guess I've sort of applied that. I think about, you know, how, how do we align the engineering and product to deliver things along with, you know, marketing? Because those things have to be lockstep, right? It's not one than the other, because then timing is off and nobody knows what's going on, things change, et cetera. So I think it's really important to have a clear vision and mission and then push that down through the organization. And as a leader, it's sort of your responsibility to make sure that you're the clarifying component between the vision and the execution of the goal so that the practitioners are actually you know, fully aware of why they're going that direction and how to actually get there. It's sort of the breakdown between why and how, if that makes sense. That's great. I love the puzzle um, analogy of putting those pieces together. Um, thanks yeah. so much. Sure. Um, Stevie, you want to tell us a little bit? Yeah, I, I, I love the composability of themes here. I feel like uh, the way that I would respond is kind of taking a piece of what everyone already said. Uh, similar to what Eric just mentioned, I think every company at different sizes is going to kind of have different levels of strategic goals, whether it's five years, three years, one year. Uh, LeafLink, you know, is a Series C company, and we're just starting to look at those, you know, three-year strategic goals. But right now, we follow the um, OKR framework as well. Um, and so we set you know, annual company goals that then cascade all the way down for accountability to the individual contributor. Um, and, uh, you know, I've done the OKR framework now at two different companies at different sizes. And I think when done right, uh, it really helps with that strategic alignment across the departments, um, as well as making sure like everyone feels they're accountable to the bottom line, right? And um, it, it definitely takes, you know, the whole village of the company, right, to uh, stay focused. And that's why I think starting at the company level and then the cascade is really, really powerful in that way. Thank you. Thank you. I've heard a lot of talks about cascade and pushing information down. Let's talk a little bit about those goals and cascading. Um, how do each of you cascade those goals? You know, are they cascaded at different levels? How are they changed along the way? What does that process look like? Um, Stevie, you want to tell us a little bit about it? I just heard you talk about cascading. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, you know, I think at the company level, not only do you have the, the company goals. Um, and so the objectives and then the KRs are what cascade to different levels. Um, but you also have themes uh, and guidelines and mandates and tenants. So our themes are, and I, I believe um, Mandar, you talked about themes as well, right? So our themes are invest, scale and adopt uh, for, for 22, 2022, for instance. And so um, what happens is then after the company level uh, goals were set at the annual level, then our different departments, so whether it's marketing or product or engineering, um, all get together. And then where there's convergence, um, if you're familiar with the Spotify model, like tribes, for instance, or domains, um, they get together as well to cascade their annual um, their annual OKRs. And then quarterly, every cross-functional pod, so specifically 
talking with tech here, so data, uh, product design, product, engineering, DevOps, QA, they all get together at the EMPM level quarterly to then figure out how do we cascade from the annual uh, goals that were set with optimizing quarterly on iteration, uh, agile prioritization, because maybe you're not focusing on the right things and you learn as you go. Um, and then learning, of course, is part of that. Um, and then the collaboration itself. At the individual level, uh, individuals will get to, you know, quarterly plan as well. Uh, one of their goals should cascade from their pod that they that they sit on, um, again, from that accountability chain. Um, and then the other two are actually around either personal development or just general engineering um, improvement for the function that they are aligned with or their domain. Um, and then, you know, I think Mutafasa, Mutafasa put out that like different, um, you know, things are a priority at different times. So whether it's, you know, CICD or it's just general quality or hygiene, or maybe it's a component library um, that's coming out of our front end guild or, um, you know, how may we figure out better, uh, you know, sharding coming out of our, our data guild. Um, individuals can be inspired to align their individual OKRs from, from those type of, of um more, I would say, function level uh, OKR setting versus the ones that cascade directly from, from the company. So um, the, the importance is, is that the process is also agile itself. So we just went through a major growth spurt. Um, we over doubled in size last year and we're, we're going to do the same coming into hopefully this end of this year. So we're actually um, resituating how we get together as a group for this planning process. But, you know, what I love about the OKR process is it's supposed to be intentional and aspirational. So you should have a, a significant amount of time that you uh, designate to the planning process. So we always start uh, the mid quarter um, and we're, we're, we're starting to think about it a little bit more bottom up um, than top down. Um, but, you know, I think we'll, we'll learn through this next session of, you know, which approach is, which is best for us. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Eric, do you want to add anything? Yeah, actually, you brought up a really good point, Stevie, um, around growth. Um, you know, I think when an organization is fairly static um, and, you know, they're maybe not growing the team super fast or the, the product isn't growing super fast, I think setting a goal that, you know, lasts over time and checking in quarterly and all that stuff is, is actually easier. Uh, but as it sounds like you're going through and what I've gone through, when you grow a team really fast or companies growing really, really rapidly, sometimes it's difficult to think about the, the timeline and trajectory of those goals as new people come on board. Um, so you may communicate your goals and everybody's in sync uh, and everybody's, you know, rock and roll in the same direction. And then three months later, you've added 50% more people and they're brand new and they don't know, right? And so all the things that you said are now gone and you're using three letter acronyms they don't understand, et cetera. So have you had to challenge, have you had that challenge and what are your thoughts on getting through that? I, I have some thoughts, but like, I'm curious to hear your recent experience around that. Yeah, I think over communication is key, no matter, you know, whether it's goals or, you know, intention of why you're doing something as being a leader, right, you're, you're overly communicating, you're disseminating context constantly. Um, but I think a source of truth, source of truth tool is also really helpful for self service and that transparency across the board. So we do use a source of truth tool. So like, it's part of the onboarding process, you know, learn about OKRs, check out your, your team's OKRs, check out the company's OKRs and get acclimated, um, you know, during the onboarding process. And then within your first two weeks, you're setting your OKRs with your manager as well. Um, you know, of course, at the individual level, if you're already at that EMPM level, you kind of inherit what's there and you're, 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 you get to tee up for the next, uh, the next quarter. Um, but absolutely, I mean, it's also that pivoting, right? Because whether it's the focus of what you're building and learning through data-driven approach, or it's like, hey, we don't have the resources we thought we were to, to achieve this. That's why they're set quarterly. And, and it's really, um, I'm sure we'll get into it throughout this panel about, you know, how do you reflect on the progress and what does that mean? Yeah, I think I think your, your comment there actually sort of dovetails into, in my mind, to a question that was asked um, in the chat about, okay, our framework, is it really possible to get it right? Um, I, I read that and I chuckled inside because uh, I think, well, I'll just say like, no, I, I don't think you can get it right um, at all. Uh, but I don't think you have to. I think you have to get it just close enough to be good enough to move forward, right? You're always going to be iterating on it. 
You're always going to be, you know, refreshing it and dialing, dialing it in. If you think that you got it right and you're just going to move forward, then almost by definition, you're going to be wrong. Uh, so I think, I think you just have to keep that in mind. The other thing is, I, I think that OKR misses something, right? Objectives and key results. That's like saying, here's the thing we're going to do and here's how we're going to measure it. But the question is like, why are you doing that in the first place? And how are you going to get to that objective that you're trying to go to? So it's missing a couple of pieces that kind of front load in OKR, which I think are really critical. So if you have that, and then you set your OKRs with the mindset of, I'm going to get it about 80, 90% right, and I'm going to move forward and iterate on it. Uh, I think that's the way you can maybe achieve the best success through that path. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, that's I love the, the front the front load. Mandar, you want to talk to us that, a little bit more? That was, I, I raised my hand to, to make the exact same point. Like, uh, Communication is key, and, and the point that Stevie mentioned earlier with respect to as the team grows, uh, communication becomes like more and more important because when you are a three people company uh, versus when you're 150, 500 people distributed across the globe, like it's day and night, right? And documenting things, moving more to asynchronous form of communication in that way is really, really important. But the point that I wanted to uh, make sure we, we get to is what Eric just mentioned, is that why, right? Like what OKR gives you like what we are doing when and all of that, but and the key part which gets missed a lot of times is why something is critical. How does it map back to the business? What is the kind of business impact it is driving? And once you, if you can land that with the team, that really gives the team also ownership in thinking that, hey, how what I'm doing uh, at my level, this is how I'm moving the business forward, right? And that's the communication key that I think as leaders, we always have to make sure that we are percolating down throughout all the levels in the organization. Yes, yes. That why is so important. Mustafa, you want to talk to us a little bit more about um, the cascading yeah. of different levels? Yeah, uh, great points by everyone. And I completely uh, plus one the why. And, and that's what I wanted to talk about as well is, is when you look at the vision, the three-year vision that I was talking about and the one-year roadmap, right? The three-year vision, one of the things that's more important there is how you're influencing the organization versus commun just communicating the goals or just setting the goals, right? And influencing the organization in the right direction is really the goal of at least the North Star, right? Um, and, and so I, I think that uh, aspect uh, and, and that viewpoint is really important when you when you set these goals. One of the things that we've done uh, that has worked really well in terms of how do you communicate this vision more accurately, because OKR is almost a weird framework to use for a vision, right? For communicating a three-year vision. Uh, for one-year roadmap, I think it still make, uh, makes a lot of sense. So what we do is we write a, a guide that accompanies the OKR document. That's like maybe three or four pages that talks about each KR and goes into more detail on like, why are we doing this? What is the, what is the reason behind it? What is the organization history? And uh, uh, how does it tie to the business goals, right? Like uh, uh, Mandar, I think you said, like it, it needs to tie to the company goals and the product goals. And how does that, how does that tie? Like explaining that is important as well. Um, so yeah, that's something we do that has worked really well for us because everyone reads that and understands the vision uh, a lot better uh, when that when that document is there. I love that document to go along with that OKR. You know, talking about documents, talking about the why. Um, what other aspects of goal setting process were important are important and help to set that successful goal? Anyone want to answer that a little bit? I'll throw something out there. Um, okay. Uh, maybe I'm answering your question. Maybe I'm not. We'll find out. Um, so as we've been talking and sort of answer your question, I think it's really important to step back and look at your organization as a set of layers, right? Uh, if, you're, if you're in the engineering group, you might think of like layers of abstraction, right? We all love to say that as a way to solve every problem ever, right? But your organization should, should sort of do that too, right? So when you think of that high-level vision, you think about each step and how do you actually break these things down? How do you actually set the goals at each layer so that way it, it's functional and it works? And I think the answer is to think of each layer as a way of translating into a slightly more detailed or broken down or specific layer. So the very high level, you know, your C-level, maybe your CTO or somebody or CEO, depending on the company, uh, they're setting sort of a high level mission and vision is super broad, right? Uh, they're not 
going down to the detail necessarily of saying, well, here's the each individual weekly tasks or whatever. Now, when you're a small company and you have a team of 15 people, it might actually be like that. Because if you think about that, that's the only layer of abstraction you have in your organization. As you grow and you add a, you know, a VP and then a director and then some managers and then team leads and stuff, each layer is sort of responsible for taking the layer above and just dividing it by four, right? Just think of it like that. Each thing, just divide by four, break it out into four chunks, and then let the next layer down also do that. I think if you imagine what that looks like, it's like breaking down that puzzle into a bunch of pieces and organizing those pieces into little sections, right? Just exactly how you'd solve a puzzle, right? Like, oh, I'm going to work on the plane right now or whatever. Um, so I think I think that's sort of a critical flow uh, in order to actually get these strategic goals all the way down into a reasonable executable plan for the rest of the team. I'm taking that puzzle and I'm breaking that down. I'm taking that with me from this. <laughs> Thanks so much, Eric. Yeah, you can that. Mandar, you do want to talk to us a little bit about? Yeah, and I, I, I really love the puzzle analogy and the color analogy, Eric. I think like definitely going to steal it from you. Uh, <laughs> uh, with respect to, so just one thing to add. Uh, so we, we, we touched on a few aspects before. It's uh, how, how do things map back to the organizational goal, business goals. Uh, one of the other things with, when it comes to goal setting uh, to keep in mind, especially from engineering standpoint, is the engineering work that you have in front of you, you should look at it as like a portfolio of items. Right, like product is going to drive a certain things. Uh, marketing is going to drive a certain things, and you know you you are going to be co-owner of those. But that's not the only stuff that is going to move the business forward. And you, as an engineering leader, are going to bring perspective to the table. I'll, I'll give a couple examples. Um, automation plays a key role, not just within engineering. There are aspects across the company where automation is going to be helpful. And that's a perspective that you should bring to the table saying, hey guys, like if this is something that is for internal operational efficiency, but if we do this, this is how it makes our process easier. This is how it helps with the quality, the kind of bugs we are, uh, the kind of code that we are shipping out or whatever work is being carried out, right? But thinking of engineering roadmap as a portfolio of work items is important. And it's not only driven by product marketing, uh, what is critical for the business. There are aspects about, I think Mustafa called out quality. That's another thing. It's like, hey, looking like as an engineering leader, you can go and use a fine comb and say, you know what? There are areas of the code where our test coverage is really bad or our integration test framework is not scaling, which is leading to our CI CDs being slowed down. We have to take on this work and each team has to contribute towards getting their test coverage up. Now, again, map it back to the business saying, hey, if we do this, this is how it increases our developer productivity. This is how it increases or decreases our uh, sev zeros that happen on the, on the site. This is how it leads to customer happiness. But just think about like the work items in front of you as a portfolio of items, not just about product or marketing. That's that's uh, one thing that I wanted to follow. That's great. Thank you so much. So let's talk, we've talked about what things have been successful, what things are helpful. Let's talk about a few things that we should avoid in this process. Um, what have you learned throughout the different processes, through the different companies, different things that we've been through in setting up these goals that um, were not helpful, <laughs> that we really should avoid for our teams, um, that we could take away from this? Anybody? Yeah, happy to happy to jump in here. Uh, awesome. So one of the key things that we uh, found with the OKR model is that, you know, you tend to have this uh, goal of like, okay, you need to meet 100% of this KR, right? And it tends to create this environment where, you know, you're always shooting for that 100% and you you set goals that you can meet. And, you know, that cycle is not necessarily the best, uh, you know, uh, for, for making sure the company is still taking risks and the engineering team or the product team feels safe to take those risks as well, right? In that model. Uh, one of the things we tried doing to to counter this is, you know, have be explicit about some of these goals. Which ones are routine goals? Which ones are innovative goals? And which ones are complex goals? Right. So it also helps you reflect and think about these goals and and you know uh, do a retrospective on these goals accordingly. Uh, so that's that's one of the things we learned, uh, which was important. 
Awesome. Eric, you want to talk to us a little bit? Yeah, I, I think that was actually a really, really solid answer. Um, it's re really good because um, you don't want to put too much. Uh, I'll just like use that to leverage what I was going to say to you. <clears throat> you don't want to put too much process and procedure in place um, where it locks people into thinking just going down this narrow path and like get to the goal, get to the goal, get to the goal. It's not a march of death. Um, it's supposed to be a journey. Um, like if you were going to go on a road trip, you know, you'd be like, Meh, maybe I'll take a detour or whatever. It's not just a highway where you get on and you can't get off until you're at the destination. It's not like that. Um, I saw a question in the, the Q&A about like, hey, how important is it uh, for like an early startup, five to 10 people? I would say uh, it's not important at all. Throw it away and ignore it. But asterisk, you know, footnote, actually just use the concept of something like an OKR where you're like, hey, here's the vision where we're going. Here's sort of our, here's our objective. Like here's, here's what we're shooting for, right? Uh, and then and throw a dart and, and try and put some measurements around that. The question you should ask yourself is what does success look like for me? What does success look like for our team and our company? And for a small startup, you want to keep that super iterative and don't feel like you failed if you don't hit the objective because you may change it. In fact, you probably will. Um, so just keep that super dynamic when you're small and young and agile like that. That's all. That's great advice. Great advice. Mandar, you want to talk to us a little bit? Uh, Eric covered like a portion of that thing. Uh, it's essentially when you are a smaller stage company, actually for any company, like moving fast is critical and iterating on things, right? Uh, making sure that you're, you're, uh, executing and especially for a earlier stage company where setting a one year or three year roadmap uh, it's essentially not going to do you a lot of good unless you're going to like revisit it like very often right so okr framework again don't take it to the t that oh it's like a checklist of items and i have to check mark everything it's direct it gives you directional guidance take it with that that spirit and uh the deeper you go or the, the higher you go in the growth cycle uh, of the of the size of the company, it, it starts to become more and more like applicable to a lot of different aspects. Uh, with respect to the things to avoid, the couple things that come to mind, one is uh, we talked about like uh, capturing it in a document and things like that. One thing which usually helps out is if there are explicit things that you are not going to focus on as a company, call those out. Inadvertently, it happens that in the flow of things, people will try to uh, land up working on things that you have actually identified that, hey, you know what, this is not a priority. Call it out saying, and actually we do capture it as non-goals in our document too, saying, hey, these are the things that we are not going to do, right? Uh, so that's one. Second thing is not doing periodic reviews. Uh, this is again to the, to the point of uh, making sure that you know, you're, you're, you're revisiting your goals frequently. But do periodic reviews, not just to track progress, but to course correct. That's the second one. And third one, I would say it's a um, it's little bit of like double-edged sword, but uh, make sure that your goals are in, in the framework of SMART goals. Uh, they should be measurable. Otherwise, it becomes really hard to figure out like what level progress you did. And again, with respect to measurable, this is again, as a leader, you have to use your best judgment. Don't make it everything like, oh, you have to increase conversion by 2.5%. That's not the idea, but you should be able to give directional guidance saying, hey, this is the ballpark by which we want to move this metric, uh, but not making it measurable. I have seen like, I have done this mistake where I'll be like, oh, improve something. Uh, and that improve is such an overloaded term that you don't know what whether you achieve the goal or not at the end of the day. So it may give you false sense of progress while it might not have actually happened, right? So being intellectually honest, like that's what OKR framework is there to bring for you. It's just be intellectually honest on what we have done and what we have achieved. So those are those are the few, few things that come to mind. Great, thank you. Stevie, would you like to add anything? Yeah, it's like when you go last, it's always like you're just an echo chamber <laughs> at that point. But um, I think, you know, I mentioned already we're a bit smaller, I think, than most of the companies that, you know, are on this panel. So I 100% agree with the agility aspect. And I think that um, was prior in my prior company as well. So I see the OKRs more as like keeping everyone focused on the intention of where we're going, as well as um, what we want to influence with with 
you know, the KRs, um, the, the call out of like what we're not doing. I think that's where the intentionality really helps. Um, especially when you have a lot of like innovative, like things going on, it's like, okay, well at any given point we should check in and say, is this still worth our, our time? Right. Um, because, you know, something else might've come through in the data that's pointing us, um, from a go-to-market side or more intentionality of our, our capital and focus, um, especially with us, you know, less capital and less resources. So, um, I think just being agile and nimble, even using the OKR framework, it's just like agile, like don't be too dogmatic if you don't need to be right. There's, it's just like kind of guardrails and guidelines to help, you know, structure, I think that accountability and strategic alignment from a North Star standpoint. Thank you. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about the evaluation of these goals. So what's the process that you use for evaluating goals performance? How do you build on those learnings for building out future goals? Um, so we've, we've talked a little bit about the goals, what's successful, what opportunities. So then now how are you evaluating how you're doing against those goals? Anyone want to start out? Okay, Stevie? Yeah, sure. I was like, well, I didn't lower my hand, so that was perfect. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of a lot of what I'm hearing already, I think, aligns to like my philosophy personally, but also, you know, at at LeafLink, you never want to, you know, say you're fired because you didn't meet your your goals progress. It, it really should reflect on like the why, like where can we course correct, like what are our learnings here? Um, again, you know. I'm not an OKR spokesman, but I, I do really like the framework. And I think to the point that I believe um, I, 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 I'm lost who said this, but the 100% achievable notion of OKRs is, is incorrect, actually, right? Um, you should be aspirational and lofty, and there should be wiggle room for failure. And then that makes it a safe space, right? Um, and then the reflection is like, why did we meet, um, you know, why didn't we meet the 100%? And it, and it opens that dialogue. Of course, you know, if you're less than 70%, I do think there's also a little Little bit more intentionality on like why is it a team performance issue is it a resource constraint is it a roadblock or a dependency um perhaps it's just the wrong focus like your assumptions your hypothesis is not being met um and you know you need to to pivot. And then my favorite is just a perception issue based on poor planning uh, and poor hygiene of, of the OKRs. But I think all of that comes out as part of like a periodic evaluation. And I am really big on creating safe spaces and inclusive spaces for opening up. And I think when you bring the team together who have that accountability, because they know like, okay, in this conversation, eventually that's going to roll up to a higher conversation until it gets to the executive team. And, you know, our progress impacts the company North Star, right? Um, that alone gets people, you know, excited and, and feeling that ownership and engagement in that process. And then within that safe space, everyone can brainstorm together. What are our learnings? How What can we take away here? And absolutely leaders are going to get learnings as well. Um, and then I think, you know, going even one step further and sharing that out and saying like, hey, this is what we ran into. Um, and this was our learning, whether it's a process standpoint, or it's like, hey, we didn't use data the right way, or, you know, just this is why, you know, we, we pivoted. Um, sharing that in a transparent way, not only, you know, kind of creates that, that cohesion still of, of how we're moving towards the North Star, but also maybe other teams can, you know, learn from, from where we, we found pitfalls as well. Great, thank you, Eric. Yeah, uh, that was that was really good. Uh, I almost took my hand down, but I decided halfway through that I had some more thoughts too, uh, so I left it up. Um, I think I think it's important that you know if you have a good goal, you have objectives that lead you to the goal. You've got measurements that help you understand whether you're successful or not uh, on those objectives, right? So you're like, hey, we have this big goal ahead of us a couple of milestones or objectives along the way. How do we consider success along the way? You have those pretty well defined. So everybody knows whether they're being successful on the way or not. You're evaluating continuously. And when it's not going well or doesn't go well, you don't just stop at the shallow first layer. You don't go, well, it didn't go well. We didn't, we didn't hit the goal for some reason. You know, we, I guess we just didn't focus on it enough. Right. Um, you should, you should root cause it just like you would any other technical problem. You should do the five whys on it, right? Why, why did it take us longer? Well, we underestimated this thing. Well, why did we underestimate that thing? Well, we didn't spend enough time ahead looking at this thing. Well, why didn't we? Well, 
you rushed us and you know you told us we had to have this estimate in three days and we needed a week like ah okay why did i rush you well that's a problem right so now you can be better next time uh so i think that's super important to always be evaluating like the root cause of why you didn't get there along the way and that goes for like a missed goal and also when you achieved a goal you should sort of do a little reflection say wow we nailed that what did we do right this time did we learn something good from that um, so you're always navigating that path and you should never, you know, beat yourself up if you miss a goal. Um, you know, I, I have a quick example. We did a, a ship week like a month ago and, uh, we're like, yeah, we're going to ship this feature in a week. Uh, it's supposed to be fun. It didn't ship in a week. It took us more than a week. I'll just say like two weeks plus, uh, and it's no big deal, right? Like, so what? Okay. We learned some stuff, right? Um, we had a goal. We missed it. We missed it bad, right? But that's okay. We learned, and now next time we're going to nail it, right? So I think that's super important to, to keep keep in mind as you're going through this. Wow, that's great. Thank you so much. I know we're winding down on time, but I want to make sure that we get um, Mustafa and Mandar your um, viewpoint on this. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to be quick because Stevie and Eric covered this pretty well already. Um, I, I really like what Stevie said about like creating that safe space for people and, and not, you know, taking that away. Uh, in that realm, I think it's also important to really be careful about like what goals you're forming and what is the purpose of those goals, right? So focus on the value that the goal delivers, not, not just the goal itself, you know? So that, that then creates automatically a culture of more empowerment. And um, I think Eric, you mentioned this, but I, when, when you don't meet a goal, maybe like you should do a five eyes for when the goal is successful as well. But when you don't meet a goal, I think it's more about figuring out, okay, what is missing in our system that is causing this to happen, right? And diving deep into that and making the feel actually, uh, making the team feel more empowered when, uh, when they're not able to meet the goal, because now they have this channel through the OKR process to, you know, either it's a resourcing gap or it's a process gap to, to fix those things, right? So uh, I think that's another way to just make sure that the team feels empowered when, when they set these goals. Awesome. Manda? Yeah, I think uh, on Mustafa, Eric and Stevie, they covered like pretty much everything that I was going to say. The, the safe space part is really, really critical. Like as leaders, we set the tone. And this is one thing that I tell all, all the leaders on the engineering team is like, as, as a leader, your job is to make sure you're creating a safe environment and a trusted environment where people can come in and they, they can share what their struggles are, how they're going about work, because if that safe space is not there, if the trust relationship is not there, then all the stuff is going to get like way harder to execute on. Because you know what, like not everything is going to be successful and we should be okay with that. Uh, as far as what Eric mentioned is we should, we should strive to learn from wherever we made mistakes. So OKR scoring and all of that, what CV talked about totally on point, completely makes sense. One uh, additional point that I would like to make is a lot of times the OKRs focus on the metrics that we want to move. What is also critical to capture is the counter metrics that you want to make sure you are not going against. And sometimes we miss out on that and it will end up happening that you are going to move the metric for like detriment of the product overall or the user experience overall. So just call that out. And when you're scoring, you should be scoring both of them. Like that's, that's the only other thing that I would, I would add. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I have learned so much from each of you. Um, I'm going to go back and listen to this again to take down some additional notes, but we've learned so much today about what's been useful for different organizations as we put goals together. Goals are important at all levels of the organization, and it helps tie that work back to what we want to do for the larger plan. Each of you have talked about how that ties back. I just want to say thank you to Stevie, Mustafa, Mandar, and Eric for all the good insights today on the panel. And um, we'll all be heading over now to the Lead Dev Slack channel, the Effective Teams, and we'll take the questions that we didn't get to answer in the Q&A section over there. But thank you again for joining, and we hope to see you next time. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>